to figure out which sentence to actually select. And so we tried a, a variety of combinations of things. Um, we were trying to favor sentences that had new information, but also favoring sentences that had information related to the topic um, and the query statement. Um, so our, our first potential um, sentence selection strategy was query expansion. And based on our preliminary results, we threw this away. It didn't seem to do anything for us. Um, we wanted to favor the percentage of topic or query terms that were in the sentence. Um, we were thinking about um, favoring the percentage of new terms, so unique words that were in the sentence um, and, and not in the summary yet. Um, we used a, a one strategy was trying to use a weighted term approach, um, so weighting um, the, the terms in the sentence with um, the, the inverse document frequency. So again, trying to get to new um, new sentences, new information in our summary. And then we came up with this strategy. We actually sat down and thought, well, okay, well, what sort of words do we really want to include? Um, if we have a summary um, of a number of sentences, we want to pick the next sentence so that it, it, it maximizes some function. And so I, I just sat down and tried to figure out, okay, well, I want to maximize, I don't want to, any stop words of punctuation in the sentence don't count for anything. I, mean, I really don't want to include those, they don't, they don't matter. But if I have a sentence with lots of topic or query words, and those words are not in the summary, they're really important. So I want to give them a score of one. Um, if I have some topic or query words, they're still important, but if it's already in the summary, so if, if the senses I have already, already have that word, um, then I'm only going to give that word a score of, of 0.5. Um, so this rule kind of penalizes for redundant information. Um, if the word is not in the topic or the query, I mean, it still might be relevant um, if it's also not in the summary. So I'm going to give that word a, a, a score of 0.01. And if it's not in the topic, and it's already in the summary, that's not a good word to add. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give this a score of 0 0.001. So this was sort of purely based on my gut reaction of, well, what words do I think would add information? Um, and I called this overall weighting scheme um, a total TF um, for, for a weighted term frequency. The other piece that fed into this selection strategy was a clustering strategy. Um, so <clears throat> many of the, the previous systems clustered the sentences in some way so that you would get new information and you had a sense of, of, of all of the facts that are out there. The summary should include um, a little bit of everything. Um, so I used a, an Oracle clustering tool, just a, a k-means um, clustering, a thousand iterations. Um, I removed determiners, so things like a and the were, were gone, um, and prepositions, to and in, I, I threw those away before I did the clustering, um, to try and try and make sure that the, that the sentences were clustered on sort of content words. Um, and then I wrote heuristics such that um, uh, the, the, the sentences from different clusters were favored, um, popular clusters, clusters that had lots of sentences, um, as well as for an individual sentence, how, how representative of that cluster is this sentence. Um, so I wanted to pick sentences that really captured the information that was in a cluster. Um, so I developed um, a, a heuristic that's, that's in the paper that, that combines all these pieces together. And then what I did was I just kind of played with this space. Um, I ran several analyses over the, the Duck 2006 corpora, trying to get a handle on, well, which of these possible weighting schemes is going to give me the best result? Um, so here you've got the percentage of words in the topic plus the percentage of new words. This score here is the Rouge score. So Rouge is, is an automated um, uh, evaluation scheme. Um, I used, I think, version 1.5.5. Um, and so for, for each of these settings, I selected that strategy and then I ran Rouge to see how well the Rouge score would be. And you can see here that, that one of the, the parameters 
that, that seemed to really emerge in this, in this study was this, this um, prevalence of the cluster weight. So CW is the cluster weight, including sort of sentences that are representative of a cluster, trying to get sentences from different clusters, um, and, and trying to get clusters that have a large number of sentences. That really factored into um, how well um, uh, the system did compared to 2006. And I don't recall exactly what the average performance was on 2006, um, but I want to say it was, I think it was in here somewhere. Um, so, I mean, I sat down and, and, and tried to optimize these sentence selection strategies based on the Duck 2006 material. Um, and the one that seemed to work the best was um, this weighted approach, so sort of favoring new words and words that were, were in the topic, um, combined with the cluster weight. That was the, the selection strategy that seemed to have the biggest effect, um, so in 2006, it, it really improved performance over the, um, the, the, the weakest selection strategy. Um, and this was the selection strategy that I used for the, the 2007 um, original submission. And then once I got the 2007 results back, then I went through and ran all of the, the permutations on the, on the Duck 2007 results. Um, again using the Rouge one score. Um, this is the same information but plotted um, as recall against precision. And you can see that I, our, our optimal sentence selection strategy, um, is right up there, um, giving us better recall. Um, but you'll notice that the um, uh, sentence selection strategy E would actually improve our precision. Um, so depending on uh, sort of what the, the metrics are, we may want to vary that. So, I mean, our, our, our goal here was to uh, really um, to sort of get a system up and running and start to look at linguistics features. In terms of our official uh, DUCK uh, 2007 scores, uh, we were system 22, not 20, um, and our automatic evaluation um, we were ranked uh, 13th out of 32 uh, systems. Our responsiveness um, we came in 7th, um, and our linguistic quality, we actually came in 24th. What did we learn? Well, I learned a lot. <laughs> um, I, I said that originally our goal was sort of query expansion, lexical simplification, and sentence strategy. I learned that, that, that our goal should have been reversed, that in fact, the sentence selection strategy had the most effect on, on improving it on our overall summary and that our optimal strategy included this, this heuristic uh, weighted term frequency as well as factoring in uh, a cluster weight. Also learned that clustering really seemed to help um, and I guess that's not too surprising because a lot of the document summarization systems already have some kind of clustering approach. Um, I learned a lot about lexical simplification. Um, I need to go back and look at this sub-sentence selection strategy. Um, so in, in looking at the errors that, that, that were in the resulting summaries, the biggest cause of error was this, this drastic pruning step. Um, I still think that, we, we, that, that it's not completely the wrong track, um, but I think it needs to be reworked Excuse me, in order to ensure that the linguistic quality of those sentences um, still remains the same. Um, I also didn't do any kind of pronoun resolution. I think that would also have uh, really helped in, in the, the final summaries. And I learned that query expansion really didn't have much of an effect. Well, so we started this conversation talking about information synthesis. Um, we're interested in combining evidence from documents in taking a set of relevant articles and somehow combining the evidence from within those articles so that scientists can explore um, different patterns that may not be apparent. Um, really interested in discovering, not in discovering information that's already known, but in coming up with new connections uh, that haven't been explored before. 
The literature-based discovery model um, does this by identifying transitive connections. Um, you know about a disease and a physiological condition, you know about a physiological condition and some kind of, of, of um, a drug or, or, or treatment that, that, that corresponds to that physiological condition. And in the literature-based model, you're going to find this transitive connection um, between these two known facts. In Metis, what you're looking for is secondary information, stuff that wasn't the main point of the document. It's a little fact that's hidden right in the, the discussion section. There wasn't much evidence. It wasn't really what you were looking for. And the, 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 the hope is that Metis can combine those secondary pieces of information and show you something new. The challenge though with Metis is that it requires that you know ahead of time the kind of information that you're looking for. It also, um, just because it uses information extraction, it has this domain specific characteristic which makes it very difficult or, or, or at least requires some rework before you can use it in a different domain. So multi-document summarization is kind of a, a domain independent way of, of combining information from multiple articles. In contrast to information extraction that's domain specific, what multi-document summarization uses as its framework is the way that people describe what they're looking for and what they've found. Um, so the, the, the underlying patterns that we're using here are not facts and then combining them in a statistical way, which is what Metis does, but rather is in using how people describe information in, in, in text. Going back to first principles of, of real language usage, um, which presumably will vary between, say, science and news articles, but will maybe not vary as much in jumping between different um, uh, kinds of science. So where are we going to next? Um, we've already learned a lot here. Um, well, uh, I've got to say I'm, I'm steadfast with the original goals, um, that my goals here have been consistent with work practices in combining how scientists already work with new kinds of information tools that allow them to do things that they can't already do um, but that support the kind of work practices that they're involved with. This is really important to the information synthesis world. Um, this idea of a mixed initiative approach, again, these, these things kind of go hand in hand. We, we're not going to replace a scientist. Right? We're trying to build tools that, that integrate people and technology and information in a way that, that, that you can do things that you can't ordinarily do using any of those one thing, any of those things independently. Um, the approach that I, I have taken and will continue to take is, is a combined approach that combines how people already do this, um, very um, time consuming user studies that look at how scientists work. Um, I showed you the results from uh, medicine and public health um, we just wrapped up a study of chemists and chemical engineers and we were actually asking them to define discovery, to tell us how do you come up with a new idea? Um, how do you verify that the hypothesis that you propose in a paper is, is actually valid? Um, if you were to look at articles that have been pivotal in your field, what is it that makes them a discovery? So really getting, trying to get at um, what characterizing what discovery is in order to guide the kinds of information systems that we're producing so that we produce systems that do this. Um, until, until scientists sit down and say, okay, the first thing I want to do is cluster my documents or the first thing I want to do is find association models, we, we, we need to understand how they work um, so that they believe these systems and use them. The second piece is technology development. Um, now clearly, uh, scientists don't work without technology. Their, their environment is inherently, they, they have search engines, they have computers, um, they have access to these tools. 
So the tools that they have access to influence the way that they work. Um, but because we don't really understand either, um, what, we, what I feel we need to do is to build prototypes and put them in place and work with scientists as, as we both learn about this discovery process. One of the interesting things about this user study was after asking these folks who were very experienced chemical engineers and, and chemists, I mean, the, the average I think was about 20 years of experience, they would look at me and say, I've never thought about my work in this way. I, I've never thought about how how it is that I do research or the process that I use. Um, and so they actually found that, that process of reflecting on how they work to be quite interesting in and of itself. Um, so in terms of the technology development, the next phase is to explore jumping between literatures. Um, and so just have a new grant that's called Claim Jumping Through Scientific Literature. Uh, all of the examples I've shown you to date have been in one domain. Even the Swanson stuff is still sort of in medicine. Um, uh, this project will start pushing on different domains, um, pushing between biology, between chemistry, and between medicine. So where are we going here? The, the ultimate goal is to um, be consistent with the goals of information synthesis, but also factor in this notion of interdisciplinary research. Um, so what we might see is at a, at a global level jumps between different disciplines, but then at a local level, uh, a visual summary, such as what I showed in, in, in Metis, or a, a, a textual summary that summarizes which parts of the different discipline actually relate to your current information focus. Um, this text actually comes from the Document Understanding Conference, so it's not actually about chemistry and medicine, um, but, but my point is that, that you'll be able to explore the intersection between these fields in different ways. And depending on whether you're uh, trying to come up with a new hypothesis, a hypothesis generation scenario, or whether you're trying to verify and existing hypotheses, you may well toggle between these different representations um, of the links that exist between these disciplines. Um, so I think we, we still have a long way to go before we really have an information synthesis system. Um, but I think the, the objective of, of moving from retrieval to synthesis and, and exploring um, connections within and between documents, within and between disciplines, um, is, is uh, going to be a really exciting step in the world of information science.